Sports point power, my name is Matt. Um, today I want to go over port timing. Um, now, I'm going to do some more theory videos and what have you on um, how port timing affects the RPM range, torque, low end torque, and what have you of um, different types of cylinder kits and etc. etc. But for this one, I just want to show you um, one thing I see a lot a lot of people post up um, port maps and they stick some paper in and they start etch a sketching with a pencil or a crayon or whatever and it's not too accurate um, going in there with a scale or a ruler and trying to measure ports is ridiculous because you're on curves etc 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 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way that I've done it before and I've done it quite a lot since and um, it gives you a really good um, port mapping profile of what's going on. So I've covered everything, well not everything, but I've covered things with paper and um, got my acetone and uh, I'll show you what I do So the first what it looks like. I do, right? And I've got three different cylinders here. I've got an aftermarket brand, this is brand new. So this is brand new off the uh, Zip 2013 project. So it's a brand new aluminium cylinder. I've got an AM6 cast iron 50cc um, cylinder and I have a Piaggio 50cc um, knackered cylinder but basically we're just going to do each one so one I can show you how it works but number two is so we can compare them afterwards um, so one of the first things you want to do is get a lint three uh, a lint three cloth don't use them horrible blue shop rags and don't use that toilet paper glue stuff because that stuff is horrible but basically um, bit of acetone, you can use IPA, same kind of thing. I find IPA leaves a bit of residue, but all we're doing is just cleaning the inside of the cylinder. So we're um, just getting rid of the surf, the oil that's in there. Acetone should be fine on cast iron liners or straight through aluminium or nicosil, doesn't seem to have a problem with either. So we'll clean that out. The reason why I say use the lint free cloths if you can get your hands on they are a bit expensive but they don't leave on every single little snag they don't leave furry bits and we all hate furry bits your dad likes furry but you uh, the younger generation nowadays seems to not <laughs> anyway so basically all I'm doing is I'm just cleaning out the cylinder bore um, just to make the whole job a bit cleaner um, and then what I'm doing is in this example I'm doing <laughs> the horrible um, OEM 50 zip air cooled one because ugh, I'm going to get crap everywhere doing this one well, basically we're just cleaning out the bores so we've got no oil or yucky dacky things. That hissing in the background is um, just do it. I've had my uh, compressors serviced and I'm just running air through them backwards and forwards. It shouldn't kick on for a while yet. But I'm just running air through them. Um, right, so now we've got that bit ready, I will uh, go through so what you want next. Just a bit of paper. This is just a scrap piece of paper I have. Um, we'll start with our 70 rear cylinder first. There's a lot of sports, not race. And um, curl your paper. I think you, everyone can kind of work out what I'm doing here. Um, curl your paper into the ball, and you're pushing between each sheet. And I'll try and make a good view there. Give it a bit more. So I'm grabbing the paper and I'm curling it. It's very important for this to be accurate that you try and get the paper to be as tight as possible. And then you need a bit of masking tape or cellar tape or whatever you've got. And um, find a bit on the interior where the interior meets. Push them apart. Stick your tape in. Try and make sure that you're expanding your paper. Can't do it left-handed. 
as much as possible. The more you expand your paper, the more accurate it's going to be. So I can see that that's pretty much a half decent fit. And now what you do is the bit that everyone goes, oh my god, I can't believe you're doing that. And uh, what we're going to do is get some spray paint. Nice and shook up. Now, this bit's quite important. What I do is get a bit of tape and stick my cylinder to the tape. Um, stick the paper to my cylinder. If this paper slides up and down in the bore, we're going to get an inaccurate reading. What you want to try and do is find a nice area to sellotape your water. You try and not touch the uh, paper as much as possible. So what we want to do is we're not trying to paint it, we're trying to leave an impression. So you want to concentrate on the edges. You want hardly any paint as well. The more paint, the more it's likely to run. All we're trying to do is make a witness mark. Like so. And then, and this is the tricky part, you've got to try and paint the inside of your ports, but like I say, as little paint as possible. And same for your transfer ports. Try and direct it at the paper as much as you can. And that should be it. Right, so you let it dry for, I don't know, three minutes. Go and get a coffee or whatever. You'll be very careful in a sense now. Whatever you do, don't rip the paper. <laughs> it's uh, a crying shame. Now you will get areas where the paint ran, but what you should end up with I'll rip the paper, get rid of all the masking tape. What you should end up with is this. Now, it looks like we went a tad bit heavy, and this, you know, it, it, it's a lot harder with. Um, it's a lot, lot harder with. Uh, small cylinders like this, you know, this is a trick I used to do with like 250s, 400s, you know, stuff like that. Um, where it's a lot easier. Let me find a pointer. There we go. Right, so you can see, and what is very important is that you have to get this bottom and this top witness mark, because otherwise you can't measure how far ports are from where. But you can see we've got the half the W and half the other half the W here. If you can make sure the split is in a nice place, um, so you get a lovely pattern in between, we've got a bit of a port there. Yeah, we're kind of... Oh, that's why. I completely... <laughs> being a dumbass, I completely missed the transfer port. But, um, yeah, there's going to be a transfer port here and one here. But no paint went in there, so that didn't help. Um, but you can see definite lines of where your transfer ports are, how far they are away from the top, so you can start measuring things properly. Like I say, if you give it a finesse, or even better, if you have, and I might have one, but I can't bother setting it up, but you get the idea. Um, if you have an airbrush, even a cheap £10 one, you can lay down, you can get in there better, you can lay down a lot less paint, and uh, you can stop all this horrible rubbing and all the rest of it. And it all depends 
how good your um, your paper is pressed against because you can see in there you can see that there you can see where the paint's been running a bit and that was from the, one of the transfer ports yeah the, I put quite a lot of paint on the transfer ports don't worry about your cylinder this can all be cleaned off acetone on this cylinder we'll just wash it all completely off so we've done that one and we've got a, a basic port map there like I say if you practice and all the rest of it and get a bit better at it um, don't try and fill something with paint and pour it down because it'll just hit the paper and it'll just start blotting everywhere and then you'll just get you'll get nothing but from this you can see this is a lot better than it is ever 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 just trying to measure it um, so if you get your one. scale out um, do you know what I need a board I need a like a clipboard that's at an angle that I can show people but uh, well, I can show you what but basically if you get your scale out I can tell quite precisely that the transfer ports uh, on either side are 33mm from um, the top of the cylinder and they are 9mm um, the duration is the duration length if you want to call it that is 9mm you can then, after you've done all this and if you scale up properly, or even more, even um, if you want to be really technical and skilled about it, you can get some graph paper and line up one of the lines with the top of the um, top of the cylinder. The other thing you can do as well is if you wind up a bit of, si a bit of steel, uh, like welding rod or something, and you make it slightly springy, and you bend the edges in like a circlip, you can put that in and that will spring out. Actually, we'll do that. I'll show you that. I'll show you what I mean. So that's that one. Like I say, we'll compare these in a minute. So that's the um, that's the Ali seventy kit. So we'll put that to one side, and uh, we'll do the fifty cc water cool kit next. All right. All right. So for this one, um, same job. But there's no point in going it all over it again. We just rolled up um, piece of paper. God, this has got God knows how many rolls in it. And um, same, same, same thing again. Just try and push the paper out radially, radially, um, as much as you can. And um, with any look, you'll um, like so. This is going to be a bit harder to do because the transfer ports on this are again totally different. Um, but we'll get a good exhaust port imprint. You could also bend cir um, circlips. You could also get a spring that maybe is a bit bigger than your bore if you do a lot of the same kind of bores or you want to get a set of springs. Very, 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 very thin wide springs like, um, oh, I don't know, valve. In installation springs, so not like four stroke proper big thick springs, but the wiry ones, kind of like that kind of thing, like paper clips. And you get a couple of paper clips and wind them around, you could stick that in there and push the paper out. Anyway, so we're uh, about ready to start giving it a paint treatment. Same job as before, uh, should be wearing gloves. Nice witness mark. Some of the parts don't sit flush against the paper because they've got reliefs um, or whatever. Don't worry about it too much. I'm trying to get you into a shot so you can see. Resource port. Straight my face. Just like that. Just make sure if there's any paint that's going to run, it doesn't run towards the paper. Like so. Let that drip out. 
if you get drips like that, you know, because you're spraying quite close to the pot, um, if you can see it pull up on the on the pot, just tip it upside down, away from the actual paper, and uh, you should be laughing. Don't hit it with any air to try and dry the paint because you might blow your paper out of the way. With any luck, you'll get an impression. Uh, even if it's just a faint one, your transfer ports are a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, they're not the same as the exhaust, because the exhaust is pretty much straight through, the transfers are a bit of a, uh, a weird one. It's pretty much in a sense the same kind of thing um, I used to do uh, cylinder re-sleeving with cast iron liners um, for two strokes and what you do there is you stick, you machine in, you pop out your old liner, you machine a new one, you pop the liner back into the cylinder, um, you then use acid to etch the steel, you pour it, you do it with aluminium heads, obviously that's why they cast iron liners, but you pour acid into the ports, you leave it in there for about 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, pour the acid back out and that etches the port profile um, of the aluminium casting onto the liner, you then press the liner back out and um, stick it in the milling machine and uh, mill out your ports. Like I said, I'm just trying to catch the, the excess paint. But we should be good. This will give us something. We'll have a few runs. Um, so what I'll do is I'll leave that for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll get back right to it. So we'll crack this puppy out, see what we've got. In a sense your problem is, is if you don't leave your paint long enough to dry, and this might happen because I haven't left it that long, um, when you come to drag it out it might drag the paint with it, which is kind of what it did there. But we have a good impression. And like I say, you can play around and get better at this. You can actually, like I said, you know, you don't want to pour paint down. But if you pour paint down the pot that way and then quickly whip it over again, you should and, and pour it back out. But again, here we go. So what we've got. Um, so we've got our transfer ports, transfer port, and then the last one we've got a really good impression of the exhaust, like I said. Um, we've got our definite top of the cylinder line, and obviously the bottom, etc. Now obviously the bottoms don't really matter, but it's good to have them as a reference. And in this cylinder our exhaust port is 20mm exactly, our transfer ports are 29mm exactly. The centre, and this is the thing you can see, I don't know if you can see it here, but you can actually see the ring of more intense paint. You've got this leakage, but you can still see. And if you take photographs of these and then scan them into computers, or you scan them into computers, or you just take photographs, you can go around and clean up the edges and show people exact porting like people do, and that's 29 there. These transfer ports are 29, yeah, so all the transfer ports are exactly 29 from the top all 29 all the way to 38 so I'd make them 9mm ports um, your exhaust port is 19mm by see that's the thing that's by 31.5 and it's pretty clear that's 31.5 and this is the difference with you know doing your chalk rubbings and because um, you end up moving it and all the rest of it and la da 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 and again, if you do your, your chalk rubbings, yes, you get, um, you know, you can't, you, well, you, you haven't got all the running for one, but number two is you, you, you can get the transfer ports a bit better, it depends what cylinder you've got. Um, but these work just fine. So that's the, uh, that's the AM6 liquid 50. So we've got that one, and then we'll just do the, uh, Standard Piaggio zip one. And like I say, I'm not going to fan it around, I'm just going to get on with it and show you. 
I'll try and position the. Uh, pay a bit more attention this time. I'll try and position the um, exhaust port and um, the port so that you get this spread, the symmetrical spread. So you just roll it up, pop it in there and um, so what you can do is the outside line oh, we can't even really see one, the outside line is where the part is going to be where the, the parting is going to be and in this cylinder I can't, I can't look, look, look. right so I want pull that back. if I want a symmetrical thingy I want to put the line there so if I put the outside line there. On the outside line needs to go where I put the mark. Now I've got exhaust studs. You can't see. I keep on going, zooming in and zooming out. Um, I have these exhaust studs. So I've got my little crappy vice. Wonderful job of holding that up while I uh, piss about. So there's my line. Like I said, if you want to look really sexy, you can match up the lines on your uh, paint.net or your um, fireworks or your Photoshop or whatever you've got. Or even bloody. Windows Paint, the amount of stuff I do on Windows Paint is amazing. Is that nice and tight? And what you're trying to do is trying to get as tight as you can in the ball. There's other ways of doing it, so if you know another way, put a comment in, you know, I'll put the people out. If someone comes out with a really good other way of doing this, um, you know, like, oh, if you put this inside the bore or if you use Perspex, it wants to naturally spring out, etc, etc. If you have ideas like that, just drop us a line and I'll, I'll, I'll do an updated video. So, um, you know, this isn't the be all and end all version to do it. You know, there's other ways to do it. Like I say, there's nothing wrong with. Um, tree bark in it as I say like you used to do at school. There's nothing wrong with that, it's simple, it's practical, it's quick. Sometimes it's a bit less messy than this is. Um, but it depends how accurate you want your reading. You know Exhaust port. Just trying to um, get as much on them ports as I can and uh, see if we can get a really good one. Drip your sod. Good old gravity, what would you do without it? Well, I'll let this dry and then uh, get back to you. Right then, I'm just taking it out. Want a bit OTT with the paint. If I had an airbrush, I'd, I'd airbrush it in. Um, but you get the idea. Um, like I say, I think I rushed this one a bit. However, 
I can definitely see it. I'll try and bring the camera in and see if you can see better. Um, get this all right. Zoom out. Now, you can see there, look at that, that. You've got a definite impression. Like I said, you can clean this up on your Photoshop or whatever. But that's a definite impression of that port. Actually, weirdly enough, the exhaust port is me. 50-50. Like I said, it's increasing the pressure. Perspex is a good thing to use because Perspex um, or any kind of kind of, uh, like a plastic or an acrylic quite thin sheeting or what have you, it wants to spring back out. And the thinner you can get it, the better. But you can definitely see them ports. You've got a definite cylinder top line there. Um, and then what I'll do is we'll now compare one against the other. So then, after all that kerfuffle and uh, pissing about what have you um, like I say you're doing this for yourself you can find you know it's a really good way of giving you really accurate um, drawings although some of them are a bit messy and yes like I said if you use a thicker this is just photocopy and paper it's pretty crap but if you use um, thicker paper or you have an airbrush or la -di -da, -di da or you have a not so intrusive paint something like that you know you just can pour into the pots and tip it back out do whatever you want anyway without me waffling on, um, just quick comparisons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the um, exhaust pot depth from the top. So we have 29.5 for the exhaust and we have 33 the transfers. So T equals 33 millimetres and exhaust equals 29.5 which you kind of expect. So for the AM6 one we have a 20 on the nose for exhaust which is 20 and for the transfers we have 29. Should have really done them the same way around, that might have helped me. As in flip them around. <laughs> um, and then for the alley kit we have what we're doing first, we're doing exhaust first and then transfer. So for this one we have a uh, 25. 25 millimetres. Yes, that's for the exhaust. And for the transfers, we have 20, that's 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 32.5. Now you can go into width, breadth and large, da, da, da. at the end of the day this is just a measurement for duration of um, kind of like valves open, valves closed type malarkey, so you could call this timing. Now timing is measured in degrees um, because your gasket thickness, la da 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 da, your squish thickness, blah 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 blah, what piston you've got, how tall it is, what rods you've got, etc. etc. can change your timing and your timing is in degrees. So these numbers don't necessarily give you your timing, but this is one way that you can compare one cylinder to another in relation to timing. This isn't giving you the timing. So if we have a look, we've got the OEM um, Piaggio 50cc, so this is the you know your standard um, air cooled one. So your exhaust is 29.5. For the AM6, your exhaust comes in at 20 millimeters. So this is what we would call a more aggressive timing. The exhaust is opening earlier than the Piaggio one. And then the 70cc sports kit, the Alley one for the Piaggio motor, is uh, the exhaust is opening at 25. So in a sense. The Sport 70 kit is opening in the middle, the Piaggio standard is opening quite late and the AM6 is opening quite early. Now these two are for the same engine, this one isn't, so there are different variables there. But it does give you an idea, uh, this, is, this is 50cc, this is 50 and this is 70, so it does give you an idea of where you've got an AM6 engine which is a bloody good Sport, you know, it's a quick engine. 
Um, you've got an OEM Piaggio engine, which is just a standard engine, and then you have um, you know a mid mid range sports kit, and you can see that if we were to arrange these in um, aggressiveness of, of exhaust valves, it would be AM6 first with 20, it would be the alley kit, sports kit with 25, and then it would be the OEM with 29. Now if we look at the transfer ports, um, the AM6 is 29, the alley is 32, and the Piaggio is 33. So we can't really include the AM6 in this because it's a completely different, it has different ports and it has a different casing etc etc the reed valves in a slightly different place and, and all these things but what we can compare is the Alley kit to the Piaggio kit and the thing is it's only 32.5 and 33 so it's half a millimetre uh, yeah, half a millimetre between the two. And the reason for this is because you aren't changing the casings, so the transfer timing really can't change too much. Um, you have to start changing everything, so that's why it's a mid-sports kit. You will get different numbers from the OEM one, maybe a couple of millimetres for these top whack super duper race kits, you know, that cost 250 quid, whatever, because they expect you to have different manifolds, um, different um, CFM or different flow rate um, air filters and carbs and etc. and higher compression crankshafts and la di da di da. Um, but you can see that it's the exhaust timing, um, the exhaust opening earlier the timing, the angle opening earlier on the uh, alley kit compared to the uh, normal cast tank kit which basically means that this kit isn't going to last as long as this this will produce a bit more power than this so that's what all the timing and the height and the measurement and la da 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 you can then from this if you have, like I said, if you want graph paper or you go on to um, some kind of software on the computers or Photoshop may do it this and the other. You can lay, or you can even just lay a grid over the top of it, and you can work out your approximate um, area, surface areas of each port this way as well. So, uh, but I said I scanned to a computer and landed on it down. So you could compare, excuse me, you can compare the OEM one to the 70 kit and vice versa and landed on it down. Then if you've been doing this for a while and you've got six or seven blown kits. This is the thing, if you have a blown kit, you can start comparing your old kits you've gone out to do and your inter engines and stuff like that. You can start doing this with your old kits and comparing the sizes, the areas, the ports, the heights, you know, so on and so forth. And it's quite a good thing to get into because someone asked me very recently, they said, you know, I don't understand all this porting, you know, should you make ports tall or what port work do you need doing on what kits and etc. etc. The fact of the matter is, is it isn't a dark art, it is a very expensive art, if you want to put it that way. Um, I don't like to you know, say names, but when Polini or Stage 6 or whoever make a kit, um, they've done all the work for you. So if you can get a cheaper Polini kit and you know the port timings of the more expensive kit, you can modify that to have a, say, a, a similar port characteristic as the more expensive kit. Basically just copy. It is as simple as that. Because what they've done is they've done a tiny bit of maths. A tiny bit of this complicated maths and maybe a few simulations on computers. But at the end of the day, they have to change the ports, stick it in an engine, dyno test it and see what's going on. And then they'll make little changes backwards and forwards. That's what the R&D is in these companies. That's what they do all day. They change the ports slightly. They say, you know, can we go a bit more aggressive with this? And then they'll get to a point where they go a bit too aggressive and then the engine starts to lose power again. So there isn't any really dark art to it, it's all fluid dynamics, unless you have some supercomputer hidden under your bed, you ain't going to work it out. Um, you're not going to come out with a secret great formula, it is trial and error basically. There are a few fluid dynamics programs and there are one or two rules of thumb, but they're not going to help you. And they've already been done, that's more importantly, they've already been done. You know, these kits now are trying to eke out the last bits, it's like Formula 1, it's trying to eke out the last bits. Um, that the system that you have can possibly provide. It's all about you know increasing efficiency, so on and so forth. There isn't any magical instruction I can give you, la di da di da, or that I even know of you know how to design the perfect ports.
<laughs> if I did, I won't be sat here doing videos. I'd be in Barbados because I'd be a bloody millionaire. Right then, so I hope you know, just showing you this and showing you the comparison between one and the other has helped, or is just interesting or whatever. Um, I've got a few other videos coming on this kind of subject. Um, a few other things that you know people say don't. People have argued backwards and forwards. Don't do this. Do this. Don't do this. And basically, I want to do a few videos, which is basically just discussing these things. Um, you know the pros and cons, my opinion and other people's opinions, etc. And what could possibly and what could possibly not be a good idea. Right then, so check out the uh, Facebook, check out the uh, other videos and uh, I'll see you in a bit.